What's up, friends, fiends, and sex machines? I'm just going to jump right in. Uh, this is the Power Hour, third edition, with uh, Prince and somewhere, Poopster. Uh, we're going to talk about crypto prices, because right now, shit is kind of whacked, isn't it, Poopster? It is. Very so, whacked. I mean, what's going on? The only thing that's crypto? moving is like Bitcoin, right? The only thing that's moving is Bitcoin, and it's barely moving. It's it's been like hovering from around ten two to ten seven, you know. But yeah, every altcoin seems to be suffering for some strange reason. Uh, yeah, you know, like Litecoin, for example, is is fucking doing terrible. 6628 right now um you know everything's in the red besides a few things i'd well, especially Eunice said leo it's 13 coin market cap i have no idea what the fuck that even is man do you i have no idea but i leo. am very disappointed at the uh, humble at the market at like, the market yeah you know which, uh, you know, I you, you was hoping got, the all uh, season would pick back up again, you know. It may. You never know. We'll see what happens. I mean, there's a lot of weird stuff going on, you know, financially in the world that may have something to do with this. Um, True. You know, uh, financially, there's still a lot of uh, uncertainty in the traditional market, if that's what you can call it because of that uh, inverted yield curve that uh, was supposed to bring on the recession. So everybody's, like, kind of holding their dicks and trying to fucking figure out where to go next. So Yeah, that's true. And the uh, trade war is going on, so everybody's like, I don't know. Yeah, we don't know. We don't know, man. But, yeah, I think the recession is definitely going on right now. And uh, I, I, a lot of people probably don't even want to acknowledge it, but I think it is going on. Yeah, you might be right, my friend. So You know, our president says, great, everything's great, the market's great, you yeah. know, greatest, un, you know, lowest unemployment and everything, but I don't know if he's actually telling the truth. Well, that's the thing, I mean, uh, you know, with the guests that we're going to have on tonight, I mean, he, he was saying, uh, I mean, he, he lives in the UK, that uh, he doesn't know anyone that, you know, agrees with what's you know, being portrayed on the media, on the internet. I mean, because, you know, the internet is a part of the media, whether it's, you know, part of the giant machine or what. It still is uh, media. Um, and oftentimes we don't know where things are coming from, you know, so it's it's uh, an uncertain time. But, so, uh, on the third this came out, uh, this guy, he uh, went into Congress, he, he, he told the Senate subcommittee that uh, the U.S. needs to uh, regulate crypto miners. But it's a really weird kind of exchange that he did with, with uh, the subcommittee because uh, he basically said that miners need to be, uh, if you know what miners are, miners are the ones who, well, we talked about this before, So, but if you're just picking up, miners are the ones who make uh, the cryptocurrency chain work. They validate transactions etc., cetera, etc., cetera, facilitating new money, well, new coins, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, he says that um, the U.S. should be regulating this and creating financial institutions known as virtual asset transaction validators. You know, they're, they're miners right now. Um, so, he says that they should basically ban miners in the public scale, um, but he contradicts himself also by saying, it's just a ban on the whole technology. And then he says further that, um, you know, but if this were 1998 and we saw the bad shit that was going on with the dot-com bubble and everything, uh, let's ban the Internet because it's used for crime. Then, you know, so I, I don't know exactly what he was trying to get at with that. It's kind of a weird... Weird flex, you know what I mean? Yeah, if you ban the miners, you basically ban all the the crypto. Well, you know, you know what would happen as soon as that were to do that? Um, everything would just 
immediately flood into China, Asia, you know, those uh, the Asian bloc. <laughs> I mean, it, it's already predominantly over there anyways, but we would be just totally out of the picture. It would be a stupid thing, if you ask me. Right. Yep. Yeah. Kind of like the trade wars. Kind of like the trade wars. I mean... I, I, you know, I was talking with someone about that the other day, and you know, I understand what it means long term, and you know how it could be important to the U.S. But uh, you know, I don't know exactly if it's the right choice. I mean, I don't, I don't know if anybody really does. I mean, everybody has yeah. their own idea of what the agenda should be and where we should be heading. Um, but it's a, it's really strange from all around because uh, with with the Trump administration. Um, you know, they want to bring everything in to America, but then they want to support that with funds that are from uh, outside of the country, supposedly. So, I don't know, man. It's it's weird. There's that uh, it's Russian uh, steel manufacturer that uh, Mitch McConnell um, reduced sanctions on to build in Kentucky or something like that. I, I don't know. It's just a strange thing. Moscow but, Mitch is what they call him. I guess, man. But anyways, <laughs> well, we're not going to talk about trade it. wars and all that. That's very uh, the complex thing, and um, it is. You know, I don't think our president is smart enough to handle such a topic. But what do mm -hmm. I know? I'm not a Trump supporter, so <laughs> yeah. I mean, I would say that even the president at this point would be the figurehead and you know the people that are doing the work would be the, the administration that he votes or that he chooses so I mean he's just out there I mean like any other president as the um, the voice to the people and uh, maybe he doesn't have any control none of us have any control I don't know well but, the, the problem with, with uh, what he's doing is that the people who select doesn't know a lot of the things that's going on. So that's the problem that I saw too as well. I mean, a lot of them quit. A lot of them, you know, just. Well, yeah, the people they he brought in and points like head of certain branches. They don't. They're not even from that area. You know, they have no expertise in that field. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's like you, you take a you take a dumb guy and get his dumb buddy into it, and what do you get? Well, you're gonna make a dumb pie, you know. Ooh, I like pie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but... Actually, speaking of pie, did you know there's a, actually a new uh, crypto? It's like a social thing. It's a pie. No. And you mine it with your phone, actually. No, but I was going to talk about uh, Pepcoin. Pepcoin? <laughs> From... Okay. This live Check this out now, man. Podcast? Uh, PepsiCo is coming out with PepCoin. It's not even a real crypto, dude. Yeah, <laughs> uh, play coin. It's like a play coin. I mean, I don't. They call it a digital currency. I look for it, you know, on GitHub for it. It's not there, obviously. Um, apparently, they already market tested it in like Saigon. Where, where is it? So I mean, they're rolling it out other places apparently, but that's the part of the blockchain everything, you know, just. Yeah. yeah, I well, think everybody just take that into, yeah, you know, everything. I mean, just like reward points, like Coke, Coca Cola, you know, kind of well, similar to that, except they probably put like blockchain, you know, blockchain name in it. Let's say it's the exact it's same thing. Thing, you know. It's just we don't know picking up the, uh, you know, the hot item and using it to market. Yeah. So, yeah, it's just I don't know. They're gonna. There's gonna be everything in the blockchain. Every every company will have a, a cryptocurrency. There'll be a Taco Bell coin, and every uh, company will also have a streaming service in their own fucking series and everything. This is this is the future. It's happening now. Yeah. Uh, Pepsi TV. So, speaking of the future, uh, I want to talk about John McAfee. Okay. And uh, yes. We're trying to ascertain, I mean, the odds don't seem very good, okay? So, when did he post this? Okay, but, okay, official John McAfee, I'm not sure when the date, but uh, at the, I guess the, era, the 2016 the or the 2016. beginning of 2017. I think it was 2017. Yeah, so. Like right after the bubble. 
Yeah, so I quote, this is John McAfee. When I predicted Bitcoin at 500,000 by the end of 2020, I used a model that predicted 5,000 by the end of 2017. Bitcoin has accelerated much faster than my model assumptions. I now predict, actually, Burcoin, you misspelled it. I now predict Bitcoin at 1 million by the end of 20. I would still eat my dick if wrong. Oh, so we're man. asking. I mean, there's, there's actually, um, a site set up for this. I mean, uh, the chances are at this point that, uh, John McAfee will, will end up eating his own penis. Um, I don't know if it's going to be live streamed or not, uh, but I expect a lot of copy cra- copycat um, penis munching. Do our audience know who John McAfee is? They have to. Yeah, he's a crazy character, that's for sure. Yeah. I mean, he was in the news and, uh, you know... Um, well, if you guys don't know, we'll, we'll, you know, I'll tell a little bit about him. I mean, if you're into computers... Um, you might remember McAfee antivirus in the early 90s. It was a, a super popular uh, antivirus platform. And actually, John McAfee was, was a very prominent uh, figure in uh, early cybersecurity. Um, so he left uh, McAfee. I believe he sold it um, eventually and uh, showed up in crypto. Mm, I don't know when, but uh, that's that's where just things got interesting. Uh, he's a very strange, uh, enigm- enigmatic man, I must say. Um, bath salts, and uh, um, I'd like to have him on one of these days. If, if if I could find John McAfee, we'd love to have you as a guest, my friend. Uh, and we can talk about um, not eating penis. I think we should definitely, <laughs> definitely search him out, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna It'll be that. a great interview, I'll tell you. So... So what do you think is the next step for crisp, uh, crypto anyways? I mean, like, are we going to move on from here? Is it going to crash? Because Bitcoin has been, uh, you know, declared dead 200 some times or whatever. Uh, what do you think is going to happen? Is, are, are we going to move on? I think we're going to stay in this range for a while. I think so, too. Until, I think it's like it's waiting for a signal. I don't know what that signal is. Um, yeah. I think it's a traditional market, but there's such a tie-in right now. It, I mean, it, it's inevitably tied uh, to one another. Uh, the tr- traditional financial markets and crypto markets um, yeah. have just been too long, and it's not a niche thing anymore. So it basically, I think, is following where everything else is going. That's my opinion, anyways. That, I agree with that. Yeah. In the past, it has its own kind of separate thing from the financial. Yeah. When the financial wasn't going well. Before, Everybody's yeah. going for the crypto, so... Yep. Shit ain't the way it used to be, man. Yeah, you you hop on chat roulette and it's John McAfee eating his own dick and Siv says that's that'd be my time to pack it in. You know, if <laughs> next if he actually do a pay per view on that, I my actually first time I will uh, pay you'll, for you'll it. Pay for pay per view to see McAfee eat his own dick, man. Uh, I know what your market is, bro. <laughs> I'm not even gonna ask. But uh, all right, moving on, I don't know. We're going to talk a little bit about, about Brexit because um, our our guest is here, but you know we we um, we have we'd have to bring him in, and it would take a bit of prepping, so uh, it would be difficult to do it. So we're just going to push for maybe next week or something like that, and we'll talk about something even more fun, like something even more fun than Mac feeding his own penis. Um, but I just want to break and talk a bit about Brexit. I know it doesn't matter a lot to many Americans, um, but, you know, the European Union breaking up will have long-lasting implications for the world financial market, uh, or the, you know, the world in general. I mean, there, there are a lot of implications. Um, you know, it, and I only want to briefly touch on it because I, I find odd this, the parallels in the British government and the United States government. Uh, there's obviously a lot of turmoil, a lot of disagreement. So why is this? Is, is there, you know, is there something going on? Are we being tricked? Ask yourself that. 
and ask yourself what's the right thing to do if you're in your position, their position, or I don't know, not in their position. I don't know what the fuck even we're at today, obviously. So, um, gee. <laughs> I'm speechless. Anyways. It's probably controlled by the 1%. That's what it is. Well, that's that's my. I mean, if you look into the uh, the camera analytica thing, that was that was pretty unprecedented for what big data does, um, and what it can do. It was the blueprint for what what is going on right now, uh, and it's not a secret. You know, they everyone has talked about it. I mean, just some people don't choose to acknowledge it. Um, and that's something we'll get into a little bit later, uh, maybe about social media and how they disseminate your information and basically create a personality profile for you um, based on little key points that you post, that you're willing to share, you're eager to post your fucking dinner, or, I don't know, whatever else. So, yeah. You know, there's a, there's a great documentary, uh, if you want to, if the audience want to find out more about that, it's called The, the Great Hack. Oh, the yeah. The, uh, That's on Netflix now, isn't it? Yeah, it's on Netflix. Uh, you can get it anywhere on the internet now, but... Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Hackers. Yeah. Oh, speaking of documentaries... It's not even, you're not even dealing with hackers at all. It's actually... Uh, it's, it's These like are brain hackers, data. man. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I just meant hackers um, hacking fucking movies, pirating movies. That's yeah, like, hacking your... Uh, technically hacking, your, but... your voting habits, what you like, and all that. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, who knows, man? What I don't like what we do in professional. Well, what I do professionally, uh, we target oh, yeah. people. You target people and and you hack them, don't you? We hack them by data. Yeah, we uh, we target marketing. It's what right. It's my feel. That, uh, it's you know, I do. I know what that is, man. It, and it is. It's it's basically um, telling people, you know, what they want to hear or. or not telling people what they want to hear, but people not knowing what they want to hear, and you confirming what they want to hear and telling them what they want to hear, if that makes any sense to anybody. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's based on their data of, like, their preferences. It's yeah. all based on their preferences, and we target that area. Wow, then, so you, I didn't know that, actually. You have a large kinship to um, what happened with the Cambridge Analytica scandal. I could probably work for them. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's a, it's a little different. But yeah, no. I, it's, but you understand it acutely, obviously. So I mean, it's uh, uh it's it's definitely a, it, it was a weird ass thing, man. That wouldn't have happened at any other time, you know. If we if we it just all the cards fall in the right place and just said, hey, we can do this. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, all these uh, populist candidates in power is mm -hmm. not a coincidence. That's I, for sure. I don't think so either, man. Uh, you know, I don't think either side is ideal. I think they all fuck us over, man. But someone's shit in the pudding. Yeah, there's there's this secret group group of people in power, a lot of money, a lot of power, is pulling all the strings. Oh man, we're and gonna get into the Illuminati, global. aren't we? Oh no. Yeah, <laughs> definitely on those that realm, you know. Uh oh, this is this is fucking territory right here. But the, yeah, I, it's kind of hard to not like acknowledge it, though. You know, you see all these things happening in the world. Um, you know, I just don't think it is what what people think it is. You know, there's there's the air of mystery. You know, behind things like the Bilderberg Group, um, you know, Illuminati, even the Masons. Like, you know, the Masons aren't what people, you know, uh, the mythology makes them out to be. It's essentially, as I understand it, just a a, a social network basically it. yeah i see people with a mason um license plate all the time now i mean oh, yeah. I, like you said it's it's just like a fraternity of yeah, it's people want to do good um, that doesn't but, uh, you know make the things that people in groups uh do right or wrong i mean you know that we have the concentration of wealth in america or any other capitalist nation uh automatically floats to the top as it's supposed to, as it's designed to. Capitalism favors the ones with capital. Um, and that's, that's kind right. of where we're at. You know, it's... Yep. Uh, it's and, kind of sad, actually. Um, everything is it's like a funnel. It's like a pyramid. And it's in the... You know, it's a picture in our, our dollar bill. 
You know that pyramid all the way points all the way to the top? Oh, the all-seeing eye. Right. That's what they used to call that, man. Right. So everything points toward to the top. So that little pinnacle of uh, top of the pyramid, mm -hmm. that's where all the power is. Yeah. And that's where the power comes from. And that's how it's designed. That's what we have. That is exactly it. That's capitalism. You know, I, I was speaking about this earlier today with someone randomly, uh, that uh, capitalism mixed with uh, democracy specifically is a very weird thing. Like, if you think about it, like, it's e extremely unpredictable, um, but also very predictable. Because, I mean, you don't know what the people are going to do or how they react, but you know what how it's going to end. <laughs> right. So, that makes sense. I mean, you know, technically this isn't, the U.S. isn't a democracy. It's it was a democratic republic, but uh, you know what I mean. Right. Yeah. It is a... The zombie apocalypse is coming. You know, I, I think we'll all get Villago or something, and that, that was the wrong disease, but... <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, that, that kind of leads me to our next subject, which is, you know, how safe are we on the internet in the digital age? And Grimnir is asking, uh, ask yourself, why are the Remainers uh, are fighting so hard to stand to the thumb of the EU rather than uh, wanting to be able to determine their own desti destiny? That's a good question. That's something I would have brought to, uh, to someone who actually lives in the EU um, tonight. I, I can't answer that, but, you know, it certainly is. It certainly is a valid question. Um, I don't know. Any thoughts about that, Poop, sir? Um, who, who is this uh, talking about? Oh, Grimnir. That's in the uh, EU. Oh, he's uh, no, no, no. This, this is Grimnir in uh, um, Real Liberty Media chat. Oh, okay. I'm not yeah. looking at that chat. Actually, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. It's, it's it's a valid question. I mean. I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of lot of questions I have. I don't have the answers, you know. I I can't say what the what the path is, but you know, I, I can be almost sure what it isn't. And the path that you know, the populist path seems to be riddled with a lot more consequences uh, for achieving those goals than um, I mean, for the people ultimately than than the other. But I could be wrong. You know, I, I, I'm not an expert. I'm not going to claim to be. I just call it as I see it, like a whale biologist. That's actually a joke from fucking Futurama, I think. Christ. <laughs> I don't get the whole populist movement, actually. Um, I mean, what is it? Is it national pride? I mean, I don't, I don't really understand it. I think there's... Um, I didn't really want to talk all about this, but, uh, you know, I think there is a part of that. And I, I've never been in that, in that group, I guess, because I was raised in a different way. But it just seems that um, it has a lot to do with how you're raised. So right. I, I don't know. But, <sighs> oh well. Yeah. Anyways, moving on. Uh, basically, I want to talk about how safe we are on the internet, how safe we are in the digital age, because everything is digitized. Um, everything is on disk magnetic. So we have the problem with our data being vulnerable to things like uh, electromagnetic pulses from solar flares, uh, coronal, coronal mass projections, uh, you know, EMPs from manufactured weapons, things like that. So, you know, what happens if the infrastructure goes down? Are we protected? Definitely yeah. not. <laughs> well, I mean, I know there are a lot of, uh, there are a lot of things that can protect against those types of uh, eventualities. Or, but, I don't think we're totally protected, obviously. Um, Things like traffic lights, simp simply, um, you know, I, I think about that with the, what's the, the Linux time, 
breaking down at, at uh, what the fuck is the year? 2038. Yeah, 2038. So all these embedded things that, that were made in whatever the fuck year that have uh, uh, embedded operating systems in Linux time, you know, they're not going to be f- touched. So what happens when 20, 2038 hits? You know, all these street lights stop working. You know, it's it's uh, it could be pretty crazy. It's called running out of seconds. <laughs> running out of seconds. So that's a yeah, legitimate yeah. concern of mine as well in 2038. I mean, it's obviously not going to affect everything, but the embedded systems, surely it could. Probably the older ones. I mean, I'm sure the, the newer... Well, um, the newer ones, yeah. The, the newer uh, embedded systems, would, I would assume they would like account for that, you know what I mean? Well, they, they, I mean, did, they, pa- they did pass that eventually, but the newer ones, yeah, I'd hope so. But Yeah. So as far as uh, electromagnetic pulses are concerned, I mean, there are a lot of things that, you know, that can help or prevent. I mean, you know, if 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 you're familiar with, with the Faraday cage, um, was cl- a classic way to block electromagnetic fields, but it's um, sort of incomplete because it doesn't account for all uh, electromagnetic radiation. Radiation. Um, so. I don't think it's totally reliable as a solution to something like uh, a giant coronal mass projection or something like that. Um, so, you know, there there are a lot of companies out there today that provide EMP shielding, and uh, which is pretty interesting. So, I mean, they they provide, uh, you know, those people that do provide functioning Faraday cages uh, and IMEI shielding. Uh, based on these uh, modified concretes, um, it's pretty interesting. So that's interesting. I'm looking here. So yeah, EMP shielded concrete stem from uh, yeah. So they they basically created this EMP shielded concrete um, that protects. It's it's you know um, a moldable Faraday cage, so so to speak. So it's pretty pretty interesting. What the fuck's it called? Shotcrete. Oh, I, that's the stuff that just they shoot down. Um, they make buildings with guns of concrete. Yeah, like a bunker, right? Like a bomb bunker. Well, that's different. I don't know. Uh, I'm just reading a random article here uh, that I have about it. But uh, the last thing I want to talk about is, as far as our protection of our data goes, um, let me find the article. Is bit rot? Do you know about bit rot? Nope. You don't know what about bit rot. Okay. Well, basically, think about this. So, if you're going to write a warning for somebody to to stay out of our room 10,000 10,000 years from now, do you think they're going to speak the same language or even work on the same principles as as we do now? That's hard to answer. We don't know. Uh, we don't know what's going to happen in ten thousand years. Well, that's basically the principle behind behind bit rot is that you know even though we have our data here, right? It's not going to be the same. I mean, think of how we were talking last week about quantum computers. How everything right now is based on binary one ones and zeros. If we switch to quantum computers, the data fucking changes. And think about ten thousand years from now. How much further can it change then? So, this is a legitimate concern of uh, of, of nuclear co- uh, containment and such, and that's why the the term bit rot was coined. Because uh, you know, think about it: who's going to have an, even a cassette deck to play a cassette right now? Uh, majority of people don't. That's that's a form of bit rot. Okay. Interesting. It's a legitimate concern, man. Uh, We're living in the end times, my friend. No, I don't know. Well, in 10,000 years, yeah, we don't even know where uh, the human race... We've only been are. here for supposedly, I mean, uh, as as we are now for, you know... A blink of an eye. I mean, the Earth is supposedly um, four billion years old, or something like that, and we've been here for, you know, as uh, a society for let's 
to put it conservatively, 2,000 some years. Uh, obviously, that's not exactly. Um, but yeah. yeah. More like five, five to six. Well, I, I mean, as a as a functioning social society, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I guess I could see. Yeah. 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 So let's see. What else do we have here to talk about? It's that whole. Um, I, I had to cut a piece out because because uh, Holius got here late, but um, you know we're gonna deal with it. So <clears throat> it's just weird shit, man. You know, so there's articles out there, serious articles. Ten ways to avoid getting murdered u- using Facebook dating. Okay. <laughs> Um, all right, sure. So, I mean, do we really need to tell people that shit? Is is this really where we are right now, man? <laughs> like, I'm reading this article. It's like, it's telling people, be careful with your location. Don't use photos with your home or favorite places in them. Block early and block. It's like fucking literally serious. I, I guess you could get dox right by the photo, right? Yeah. Like a landmark or something, you know, but yeah. I mean, do do people really care? I mean, like, you know, un- unless you're like a well-known uh, person or uh No, dude. I mean, people you know, are fucked up. I wouldn't put it past anybody. I mean, there's, there's shit we don't hear about. I mean, I don't know. If if somebody can do it, somebody will do it. There, there are so many people at this point that uh, it's almost a law of probability, I think, in my mind, um, that people will push the limits or just have that mutation or whatever that makes them do whatever they do. Yeah. Well, p- people have a lot of time on their hands. That's, that's, that's you. Life. That's too, man. You know? Staying busy is yeah. very important. Like you, with your... Data hacker stuff. Hacker. Yeah. Hacker. Hacker. Hacksaw. He's leak. Sounds real good, man. Yeah, man. So something that uh, nobody seems to be talking about this time around is kind of funny. Um, I was reading something the other day that the, you know, the spending bill that was supposed to avert the government shutdown actually expires the end of September. And so we're basically at the position we were you know, earlier in the year where, oh, the government's shutting down. Everything is going to be fucked up. And, before we were uh, shut down? Yeah, before we were shut down. So we're, we're, we're heading to that point again, I guess. Um, you know, nobody seems... It seems like we have a lot of other things to worry about now, I guess. But um, I remember when I, when I said... Uh, when, when this happened last time, I said that uh, America is kind of like a wounded animal. You know, shit, man. We really got to watch out. I mean, a lot, a lot of the uh, the gun rights people. I understand what they have to say about the the well armed militia because uh, it's becoming uh, a real possibility that uh, you know something could happen here because because we're just so fucked up. <laughs> so I mean, yeah, we've we got guns too. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's definitely. Um, you, 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 do you think that there will be something happening? Let's say Trump will not win the 2020 election. Do you think there will be an uprising? No, I don't think anybody has the balls to do that. Honestly, maybe. Well, I mean, uh, Trump. You know, supporters are pretty crazy. I mean, oh, I thought you meant on the other side. Oh, if he does not get. Um, no, no, yeah, when he does not win, like, you know, it's like, they're going to call, like, oh, you know, there's conspiracy the that, or, you know, the that I, I don't know, I, I think something's going to, I think something's going to belly up and, and give. Well, you know, the way but that uh, some like, people talk about it, that it's a real possibility. I mean, if if you remember before he even got elected, he he uh, he said that if he didn't win, he would not accept it. Um, right. That was... Uh, 
no matter how you feel about anybody, uh, any political candidate, that's uh, that's true. <laughs> so, um, you know, and that's just democracy. So, w what would happen this time if that happened? Is he going to have the same remarks? Uh, I don't know. Um, anyway, well, he never know. We never know. Never know. We'll have to. We'll have to see. Yes, we will. Yes, we will. A oh, year, year from now. So, uh, a year goes by pretty fast, actually. It does. You don't feel like it in the, when you're younger, but when you get a little older, man, a year just go by. You know, time's really flown in my life. I mean, I, I'm kind of young still, I guess. I feel old as fuck, but you know, uh, time's flown for me, man. It's just yeah. Oh, H is but a number, right? <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> hey, I was checking this out. So, um, Samsung is releasing a blockchain branded Galaxy Note 10. No way. <laughs> yeah. So, Shit. if you know, like, the ga Galaxy 10s, there's a fuckload of them. There's tons of them. Um, yeah. This is just in South Korea so far, called the Clayton phone. Um,. So I guess they're they're it's another corporate blockchain apparently. The blockchain Is online. it like Is it built for like the phone to like replace Samsung Pay or I don't know man. I, I don't want blockchain. I don't well, use those apps but No, apparently HTC um already offers a blockchain phone. Um you know, huh. and Samsung I guess included crypto wallets and some of their, you know, standard S10 packages already, so I guess they're just flexing their blockchain everything muscles just like everybody else. Yeah. If you don't have blockchain, you ain't nothing. I guess. I mean, I'm looking here. Uh, the Caitlin phone is the same hardware and is expected to have the same price as the non-blockchain Galaxy Note 10, so it's just to cover the market further. You know, they're just picking the hot trend and going with it. I would expect it to be the same phone. I mean, the blockchain is just the software, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man. People believe anything, man, you know? Like, oh, it has Bitcoin in it. It's got to be tasty. Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> Commit one, you know, like a physical coin, right? I remember that was a, a craze back in the, uh, I don't know what year it was, but everybody wanted like a, uh, a physical coin. Oh, it was, 20, it was like 2014, I guess. I mean, yeah. 2015. Everybody's getting the physical Doge coins. I mean, and they're just like tokens. Uh, I mean, I don't think they even had like QR codes on them or anything. Yeah. Well, last year I got a McDonald's coin, the Mac coin. <laughs> Big Mac uh, was like 50th anniversary coin. Yes. I only got one, though. There was like a set of four. Uh, I, only, I only got one. But, I would uh, pay you $50 million for that <laughs> Big Mac coin. <laughs> That's, hey, man, I'm, I'm trying to save that for, uh, I don't know how long, but uh, eventually maybe I could sell that. Yeah, man, you'll put your uh, grandkids through college with Big Macs. Or, or buy a Lambo. With buy it. a Lambo. Exactly. Got to do Lambo when you're in crypto. Exactly. I mean, I wouldn't do Lambo. I would do like a Maybach or something like that. That's that's where I'm at, man. I'm but seriously, I'm a money. civic. I'm a civic guy. A civic with a K20. That's all I want. Civics are nice, man. I dig them. I mean, I had one before. I mean, with the low profile tires and shit. Yep. I dig them. They're cheap. Yeah, I mean, they're they're quick. Uh, they're reliable. <laughs> so. Well, it's not quick if you have a stock, but if you uh, mod it, then oh, so you know more about than I do. I'm not, I'm not like that hardcore. <laughs> I'm not either. I don't even have one. Well, I had two Civics, but uh, there's a story to them. Uh, <laughs> the first one is an EX, you know, I did a little bit of a mod, but anyway, that got rear-ended in a freeway accident. Oh, and I'm man. lucky to walk out of that and uh, unscathed, but oh shit! Uh, yeah, it was like a it was like a four car pile up. My car actually absorbed all the impact. You know that that uh, reminds me of something that happened in my life when I was 19. 
I, I was involved in a major auto accident. Uh, I actually was in a coma for um, for six weeks. Well, half of it was induced, half of it was real. Uh, but both yeah. of my lungs collapsed. Uh, uh, you know, I'd, I'd, my femur broke in half. I broke my jaw, cracked my skull. So, I mean, I'm kind of lucky to be here too, man. We're the survivors. And that's how we are here together. At it, know? man. We, we survived fucking car wrecks somehow. Somehow we're, yeah. the, cho- we're the chosen uh, ones. It's not... Uh... We're the chosen ones, yeah. <laughs> we, uh, I'm a little more luckier than you because I, you know, the... the uh, yeah, what I got you call cars, it? man. The emergency guys came around and says, "Man, you're one lucky dude." You know, I, we see a lot of these accident wrecks, and oh, they, they don't come up pretty, walking, man. standing up like you. You know, no, I was like, no. I took a picture of my car, like, damn. Yeah. Well, anyway, pretty dude. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, I've got scars. I've got like a a scar on my neck still. You know, it's not good. It ain't fun. Not good. I yeah. don't like it. I, you know, in a little civic, you'd think I would be dead by now, right? So. Actually, that that leads me uh, to this: uh, is that I was driving uh, a Pontiac 2600, I think, in my accident. And if I, I were driving, have... yeah. And so, if you if you know that era of automobile, it was like 1986 or 1989. They're steel fucking beasts, basically. Um, if I I later actually had a Ford Focus, and there were you know fiberglass shit traps and. Uh, if I were driving that Ford Focus to the time of, of the wreck, I, w- I would have not made it out alive. So I think about that. I think about, somebody was saying the other day, I imagine one of those little um, electric cars getting hit by a, uh, a pickup truck at 40 miles an hour. Like, you don't want to think about it. I mean, it's pretty ugly. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. The, like the Priuses and all those uh, small compacts, but... But you can't really worry about that, though, you know? If you worry about that, you can't leave the house. No, yeah. I mean, you have a better chance of being struck by lightning, I heard, than or, than dying in a plane crash. Right. Which, uh, I don't know how accurate that is. I don't remember where I heard it. But, um, but it's actually funny. Speaking of lightning, coffee guy, Zen guy, he lives in Oregon. Yeah. So last night, he, he told me that uh, there were 700 plus lightning strikes and about 50 fires around his area. I mean, they were manageable fires, apparently. No, way off. He said uh, 1,600 plus lightning strikes. That's a lot of lightning for uh, for Middle Oregon. <laughs> Actually, there, there um, there's a show that uh, what's it called? The Price Light Guy. What is that name? William Shatner. The Unexplainables. Oh yeah, the weird. There's one area. There's a segment. One of his sh- episodes. Uh, there's one area has tons of lightning. There's like more than anywhere on the earth. Oh, I forgot what that area. Is that in Oregon? It could be. Um, huh. I have to reference that episode again, but yeah, it's uh, actually a lot of lightning. It's like, funny that you mentioned that show because I mean, like to fall asleep, I'll put on something random, and uh, I was actually watching that last night. And he was talking about this area in Mexico um, where basically anything that flies over it, it fucks up the radio signals, it, it electronics. And uh, apparently this is, if you know about what the Atacama alien is, have you ever heard about that before? No, but what you're talking about is the Bermuda Triangle? No, 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 no. This, this is, I guess, similar to the Bermuda Triangle. And actually uh, about the Bermuda Triangle, it's been sort of, not proven, but <clears throat> disproved to the point where plane disappearances anywhere else on the ocean are no more likely to happen anywhere, you know, more than the uh, Bermuda Triangle than anywhere else. And it's not strange for anything. It's just that, uh, you know, those particular instances were of some importance or attached to. So, um. Or higher, uh, Higher traffic in that area. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's probably a, a, a high traffic area there, too, yeah. So, anyways, the uh, the Atacama skeleton, um, regardless of whether this is real or not, apparently this area over the Mexican desert 
actually exists where it disrupts radio signals, crashes air cla- air, aircraft, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So apparently in 2003, this uh, farmer found this this uh, this like thing in a trap or uh, a fetus. I mean, the stories I've heard are kind of like some of them are different than the official uh, the official tales. I mean, I don't know what's real and what's not, but anyways, this this little body was found, and uh, they did a DNA test on it, and they said that it was a mutated human being, you know, dwarfism, scoliosis, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They debated it, and they think it's uh, they think it's an alien. Well, part alien, right? Or part alien, uh, and they yeah. think that uh, you know it dropped over that area in Mexico. I, I mean, because I of know. the uh, radar messed up, right? Uh, cause yeah, a, you never know, man. You never know. The world's a weird place, just as William Shatner says, dude. Yep. I watch all Definitely. kinds of stuff like that. I mean, uh, there's nothing really new to to to, to talk about with with uh, conspiracy theories and aliens and stuff like that. I mean, there's David Icke, all that fun stuff. Oh, speaking of David Icke. Did you uh, see where Joe Biden's eyes started bleeding during the the that climate change thing? Yeah, I heard about that. <laughs> like, That's uh, what? you know some reptiles, man, for protection they bleed out of their eyes. It's fucking true, man. David Icke is right. <laughs> so, so Ben Biden, Joe Biden is a is a reptile. He's a reptile shapeshifter, man. Just like all of them. Hey, I don't know if you're old enough to to watch it. Back in the, I think, 80s, there was a show called V. I know V. Yeah, it's like I mean, that, I, right? Uh, but I watched it in the 90s on the Sci-Fi Channel in repeats. That's when I got into, like, uh, anime and everything else. The Sci-Fi Channel was yeah. fucking awesome in the 90s. Yeah, they're, they're still on now. I mean, I, when was that? A couple months ago, I, I stumbled upon it. They were rerunning this uh, V series. It's been a long time. So basically, yeah. Reptiles, man. Reptile aliens. What was that? Uh, to be human. The other show with the they had the alien cops. Uh, there was the human cop and the alien cop. The they had kind of like a spotted bald head. What the fuck was that called? I forgot this. Sh- yeah, I, I, I think I know what you mean, but I don't know the name of the show. There are a lot of past sci-fi shows, you know, that that they're probably going to reboot. Who knows? You know, we'll see what happens. Yeah. There's a lot of good sci-fi out there. I mean, uh, I don't know if anybody watches like The Orville. I like The Orville. I think it's good. I mean, I haven't oh, watched all, this, all the Star Trek Discovery yet, but I'm obviously, as everybody knows it, uh, on IRC, I'm a huge Star Trek fan. Um, oh, yeah. But, you know, I'm a purist. Yeah. So, I've liked what I've watched of, of, of uh, Discovery, but it's taken me a bit for it to grow on me. Um, mm-hmm. And I haven't actually watched the, the the latest shit on it, but I'm actually real psyched for that new Picard series. I mean, I don't know if it's going to be good or not. It the the, the preview was kind of sketchy, but um, yeah. you know, it seems like they might be trying to cater to the action people. So we'll see what happens. I mean, I'm going to watch it either way, but um, yeah, I'll watch it and see what happens. It's probably good. Might be. We'll see, man. Yeah, so don't get killed uh, while using Facebook dating. Um, yeah. Speaking of, uh, last thing to mention about Facebook before we close up here. So, uh, I brought this up earlier. Um, how to stop Facebook from identifying your face. Apparently you can do that now. So, good deal, people. If you use Facebook, uh, go into settings, face ne- recognition, edit. Do you want Facebook to be able to recognize you in photos and videos? Select no and close. That's fucking that easy. And really? Then, <laughs> I mean, I, I usually have, I mean, location services and everything turned off on for everything on my phone except for things that I uh, implicitly trust. Um, I never trusted Facebook, obviously. Uh, I was a bit haphazard, I guess, early on. It was just posting random shit, but it really it mattered to nobody but me, so I, I don't care what they found. <laughs> yeah. I don't really post anything there anymore. I mean, I just have uh, family and contacts all over 
and I use that as a way to tell them to contact me somewhere else. <laughs> yeah, I signed up way long ago where you could put fake information in, and I kept it. Oh like yeah, that. I didn't actually. I mean, that that was probably when I signed up as well. But now they actually verify your name and everything. Verify your name and a phone number. It's like crazy. Yeah. I don't know. <sighs> Weird world we live in, man. It's you know, too the, the, it's I think about, um, you know, there's third world countries out there that, that uh, you know, Facebook is, is really their only source of information. Like, they, they uh, I forget what area this is in, but uh, they offer Facebook access for free above internet access. So it's a low-income population, and often the only thing that they see is Facebook, which is obviously a glorified echo chamber. Um, and that's scary, dude. Yeah, Facebook did something like that. I uh, don't remember the year, but they wanted it was a rollout, like these uh, drones, or I think it was drones, that flies around the, the, the globe and offering... Um, Internet service? Oh, man, there's this movie about that I watched. Oh, what was it called? The Cell? No, not this. Yeah, I think it was called The Cell. It was about this guy who was uh, in an automated prison, basically, and everything in the world had been automated. Uh, you know, these drones drop useless items to people, uh, you know, like clockwork. Um, that's what that reminds me of. I, I think it's called The Cell. It was, it was a decent movie, though. It threw me off, uh, threw me off guard. Like I said, I love sci-fi. What can I say? Yeah, I have to, have to look that up. That yeah. Sounds interesting. It is pretty interesting. So yeah. Anyways, the recap. We're gonna be closing up. So basically, Pepcoin. John McAfee will eat his penis. Uh, crypto regulation. How safe is our data, long term? A lot of other shit. What do you think? Any closing remarks, Poopster? Um, I think there's a website for uh, calculating the the odds of uh, John McAfee eating his penis. So. Oh yeah, it is. It, there, there is. That's what I was referencing earlier. Actually, um, it's a GitHub right. site. Uh, yeah. I don't have that anymore, so. so basically, but, anyways, but I'm sure the audience could find it if they will search for it. Yeah, it's it's a real time ticker uh, tied to Bitcoin's price, um, showing the probability that he will do that. So at Bitcoin's current price, which if I refresh it here, I don't think it's seven. Yeah, it's ten six six five nine one. That's actually a pretty impressive price, but um, the probability. The price needs to increase $97,518.65 to be on target for his $1 million. Um, <laughs> so, that's 482 days. That's a lot of money. Could happen. I don't know. But on that yeah. closing remark, I guess uh, we're going to let you go because that's all. That's all we have for today, I guess. It's been a fun hour. It's been a fun Plus hour, or mostly an hour. You know what I mean? We tried. Yeah. So sorry about the uh, technical difficulties. And, uh, you know, use EMP shielding, get in your bunkers, because we're all fucked. Um, no, I, I'm not that type of guy. But, you know, there's a lot more to be worried about than, than not worried about, I guess. Yeah, again, don't worry about it. As you said, if we if we if we were like that, we wouldn't have we wouldn't be able to leave our houses in the morning. So exactly. So just live like you live normally. That's Yolo, key, isn't it? Yolo. Yeah. Fuck. Yolo. I never thought I'd just hear myself saying that. Yolo. Yeah. Yolo. Yeah. Well. All right. Well, thank you guys for tuning in to the Power Hour here on Real Liberty Real Liberty Media dot com. We will be back next week, better prepared, with no technical difficulties or interruptions. So get ready, because here we come. That's right.
All right, Peter. all right. I'll do, I'll do a, um, what's his name? Matthew McConaughey. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> That's pretty good, actually. <laughs> Speaking of, uh, I don't know if you know who Harmony, Harmony Crane is. No before, idea. Before I leave, I have one more thing. Uh, so Harmony Crane did the movie Gummo, if you ever watched Gummo. And he did a lot of, uh, I don't actually know if I'm pronouncing his name right, so apologies if I'm not. Um, but, uh, He's kind of like the anti-Hollywood director. He kind of like, he's kind of about portraying the worst of American life. And um, recently, a movie came out called The Beach Bum with Matthew McConaughey, who basically plays a rich guy fucking around, and he's an author apparently. Like he he knows his shit. But it was an interesting movie, kind of anticlimactic. But that's how all of his movies are. They're just meant to show how shitty and depraved and useless everything is. It's uh so check out the beach bum maybe. On that note beach. Yeah, the beach bum. <laughs> yeah, I remember that one. Yeah. Alright. Over and out. Peace.